administration is coming under increasing pressure from some here to uh, take action. There are uh, those who say that um, the longer it stands by without doing anything, the more the United States looks ineffectual. We heard from Republican Senator John McCain, who is one who believes that uh, there is clear evidence of war crimes having been uh, committed in Syria. He told a news conference that failure to act would harm America's standing in the world. We know for sure that he's used them at least once. Now here's the second time. Horrific, horrific. And if the United States stands by and doesn't take very serious action, not just launching some cruise missiles, then again our credibility in the world is diminished even more if there's any left. But let me put this question to both of you. David in Washington, first of all, we've had assurances in Britain that Britain, America, and France are on the same page about Syria. They seem to be more the same. Well, I think there is certainly some reservation on the part of President Obama here. Um, there's reservation on the part of uh, some fairly senior people in the U.S. military as well about the possible dangers of a military intervention in Syria. Uh, President Obama, of course, um, reluctant to get drawn into another conflict in the Muslim world. He's uh, uh, just pulled U.S. forces out of Iraq. He's about to do the same thing in Afghanistan. And um, this was not something that uh, ideally he would have wanted to become involved with. Um, added to which, Andrew, I think public opinion polls here are showing very little appetite on the part of the general public uh, to get uh, to uh, stage some sort of intervention. So, so President Obama would really first have to show the American people that it was in their interest for him to act. But Sebastian, uh, from a diplomatic point of view, world leaders must be hoping these inspectors don't find anything, because if they do, they won't have to respond. It's not how it's coming across in a way, because what we've been hearing, although there is caution in the US, but I mean, we heard from White House sources yesterday, and we're hearing this from the UK, from France, and Turkey, and so on, that really they've already prejudged this. They're saying that they already have enough evidence to prove not only the chemical weapons we use, but the Syrian government carried them out. So they're, they're giving a sense that the, the decisions they're making are not dependent necessarily on what the weapons inspectors come up with in the next few days. If you were to go by the UK newspapers this morning, you feel that the missiles were about to be launched any time soon, which is a different, certainly, from the US. But then, of course, you know, President Obama actually has to make the final decision. So that's my correspondent in Washington, David Willis, and our Arab Affairs editor, Sebastian Usher. Right now, the UN Secretary General's spokesman is briefing journalists in New York and has said that the World Weapons Inspectors will continue their work tomorrow, but they're not yet sure if that'll be at exactly the same site. All the latest for you at BBC Breaking on Twitter or online at bbc.com slash news. You're listening to the newsroom here on the BBC World Service. Still to come, our correspondent Daniel Sanford in the Russian Arctic, where there's concern about the impact of drilling for oil and gas on the natural environment. I need to talk about it for about 50 metres away. It does a train wheel. Yes, so more receipts are along heavily spitting and projecting out into the water. And if I disturb them, they may panic and to push each other to death as they try and escape into the sea. A report on the way for you later in the programme. Now to the troubled relationship between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Talks in Islamabad between the visiting Afghan President Hamid Karzai and the Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, the latest attempt to mend fences there. In particular, Mr Karzai says he wants Pakistan to use its influence to play a mediating role with the Taliban. And Mr Sharif undertook to provide his full support. Here's the BBC's Mina Bakhtash in Kabul assessing the importance of that promise. That is the most important thing. Uh, every change of leadership in Pakistan is uh, being seen as a new opportunity in Afghanistan. This is why they are building great hopes, as Mr. Karzai put it today, a newly elected uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif. Uh, Afghans do believe that the key to Afghanistan's stability and peace is in Pakistan's hand, and that oh, the Pakistanis, they have significant influence on Taliban. Well, U.S. Open certain to have 
tachycardia. Delays, distractions, fist pumps in the direction of the opponent, crowding service lines, trash talk, strategic bath, room breaks, suspect medical timeouts, even an occasional hard bump on the changeover. These tactics will be all on display as much as big serves and hard ground strokes at the U.S. Open beginning today in New York. Yeah, which is today, I guess. Some will be subtle, some bold, some might even be called cheating within the rules. Tennis isn't the invective spewing, crotch grabbing, play disrupting Wild West it was in the early decades of the professional era. Rules and enforcement have tamped down the occasional barroom brawl atmosphere that undermined or perhaps enlivened the genteel game. I don't think for a second that players have given up looking for ways to burrow into the opponents' heads. Gamesmanship in all its forms is alive and well. It's rampant, 16th rank Maria Kirilenko of Russia says. Some tactics are more controversial than others. After squandering five match points in the semifinals in the Australian Open, Victoria Azarenka opted for one of tennis's go-to moves. She called for medical assistance. For 10 minutes, her opponent, which will be Sloan, yes. American youngster Sloan Stevens sat and waited as she prepared to serve for survival at one, six, four, five. When play resumed, Azarenka broke Stevens to seal the match and then offered some ill-timed comments about breathing problems and avoiding the choke of the ear. Azarenka was within her rights to call for a medical timeout, but many felt, felt the second-ranked Belarusian had gamed the system. Stevens' coach, David Nankin, called it cheating within the rules. The New York Times splashed it on the front page under the headline, A Timeout Jeered Around the World. Today's hijinks fall mostly under the umbrella of tempo control, breaking rhythm, causing distractions, and stalling. Players ask for a towel between points. They feign unreadiness before an opponent serves when they are supposed to play at the server's pace. They tie their shoelaces. They saunter over to their changeover chair to grab a different racket. It's people trying to take advantage of the system. Veteran stubbles player Lisa Ramon. Lisa Raymond or Ramon. Raymond of the US says. It's unfortunate. I don't see that ever changing. I played against girls that are dancing in the service box, that are taking bathroom breaks after losing a set six love or taking medical timeouts when you're about to serve with the set. It happens every day. What's considered the most egregiously mistreated rule of modern tenant at modern times? The bathroom break, which is commonly misunderstood to be a tactic players use to collect themselves and repeat momentum. Don't count on the US Open passing without plenty of toilet timeouts. Grand Slam tournament rules permit two restroom visits per match which must be taken on a set break. For some, that's too, too many. Former top five player Greg Gilbert says he contested more than 800 matches on tour and never once left the court to relieve himself. If you have to go to the bathroom, says Gilbert, an ESPN commentator and a coach, it better be because of the runs. What gets under players' skins is the time it takes opponents to do their business and return to the court. Get cold, complains former number one Elena Yakovic of Serbia. You get stiff, then you can't put the ball in. It's like another match. I need another warm up. Yankovic, who says she has been waiting for up to 20 minutes, is in favor of a time limit. You're going to pee for 10 or 20 minutes, she says. Who does that? And don't get Tom Gullickson started on excessive telomeres. I understand the physical points, says the former U.S. Davis captain who played 11 years on tour. I get it in places like Cincinnati, but going to the towel at Wimbledon when it's 65 degrees and you've just hit an ace, it's like a pacifier. This year, in a match against Serena Williams, Spain's Annabelle Medina 
uh, Gar Garagas, yeah. is that what you say? was caught on TV rubbing new balls against her racket in an effort, presumably, to fluff them up and slow them down before they were in play. There is no written rule against this, but the WTA, WTA said that had the umpire seen her scuffing balls, it could have triggered a code violation. The USA's Tom or Tim, Tim Smizek witnessed a player he declines to name purposely lean into a ball that his opponent had smacked across the court in a fit of anger. He hit me! He hit me! You have to default him! The player protested to the umpire, who didn't fall for the ploy. Still, the incident so rattled the victim of that bit of gamesmanship that when the two played later that year, he'd lost the match before he walked on the court. I think it's not a really very good player. So Some players head away from a player's preferred sequence of shots during a warm-up to mess with the opponent's head. Um, 2005 U.S. Open semifinalist uh, Robbie Ginepri said. And of course, there are medical timeout timeouts. Tennis's version of icing the kicker. <clears throat> the WTA, for one, has tried to limit their abuse by forcing players to pay for any on-court medical attention that exceeds six visits a year. Some simply play brazenly dirty. Nicknamed the Worm Do you know who no, no, I don't. for his on-court celebrations as much as his antics, Roddick Stepanek, Stepanek of the Czech Republic is renowned for getting in players' faces and bending the rules. Double specialist Max Mernie, Mernie? Yeah, Belarus. of Belarus says Stepanek elbowed him like a hockey player during a changeover in last year's doubles finals in Miami. He's good at it, says six-time Grand Slam doubles winner Mernie, explaining that Stepanek managed to do it in a way that the umpire didn't notice. He probably wanted me to retaliate, but we're not in a contact sport here. Bernier and his partner lost the lead and the match. Stepanek doesn't apologize for his tactics. Quote, at the end of the day, in every fight, everyone is trying to use everything, which is possible, says Stepanek, who has reached the top ten in singles and in doubles. If you can get in your opponent, if you can, oh, if you can get your opponent thinking more, getting distracted is only benefiting you. Though he says his actions are instinctive and done in the heat of competition, he isn't always proud. Definitely you do things in life, not only on the court, but you're not the best ones, he says. Winning Ugly, author Gilbert, recalls the time that, annoyed by an opponent who kept asking for the same ball after every point, he hid the ball in his pocket. When the umpire told him to return it, he whacked it out of the court. The guy got so rattled, I turned the match around from down a set in a break and won the last 10 or 11 games. Gilbert says, I got fined $500, but it was worth it. Players acknowledge that umpires are in a tough spot. While the tours have cracked down on between points time violations with stricter enforcement, refusing a player an injury timeout or bathroom break is a nuanced and potentially dangerous call. If a guy is tired or cramping, as a spectator, you're like, no way should he get a break. Double specialist and an ATP player council member Eric Butorek says, but for a medical professional, if you say you're not injured and you actually are, you're liable to get sued. Thankfully, many players said the days of bad boys such as John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors intimidating officials, berating opponents, and causing major disturbances are mostly in the past. That comes in part, they say, from classic comportment at the top of the sport. Players such as Djokovic, Federer, Murray, and Nadal have set an example for the rest of the tour that is trick has a trickle-down effect. The other best options? Ignore it and take it with a grain of salt. Most times, if you let something like that affect 
Jim, it's your fault, Brian Harrison of the USA says. Sometimes it's just funny. Uh, Nadia Petrova says, they tried to pull this thing. I'm like, sorry, not going to work. You don't need to be in the love line. 